okay in this video we will talk about the setup page in splunk apps okay how to create or basically we will get a fair idea about what setup pages are and how to structure them and then maybe in next few videos we will we will try to get some examples of creation of the setup pages okay now setup pages are really important in splunk based apps because over there you can store lot of user specific informations right so let's say for an example uh, when when you deploy the app to a, to a splunk deploy enterprise right now when first time users are accessing that app maybe that time they need to enable a safe search right or maybe if i talk about you are building an app for amazon web services right so those amazon account details like user credentials their their passwords everything you can store in encrypted format in your app as well right so those kind of stuff you can do using using a setup page or maybe if i give another example like you want to change the earliest and latest time of a save search right so instead of allowing user to go to the back end and change it you can always create a setup page to to achieve the same stuff as well okay so setup pages are generally if i if i just show you the the tmdb app we will be seeing lot of examples related to the, this one only okay so if i if i just go to app manages manage apps okay so here splunk generally shows the list of apps right now for if your app has a setup page then it will come something like this the setup okay in 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 this actions options so if you click on that setup it will it will bring you the setup which is whatever you have defined for your application okay so so i created a diagram for this one just to keep everything uh, together okay so the main requirement for a splunk setup page is a setup.xml file okay so that's the that's the must have requirement and the location of that setup.xml if i just make it bigger hopefully you'll be able to see it okay it will be in your app default folder okay this the this the first thing we need to understand now structure wise if i if i just talk about the structure of the setup page it's an xml file that means it will it will support lot of lot of tags right now the main tag is the setup tag okay if you see it over here now under the setup tag there will be lot of tags called block okay now setup is the base element of the setup page okay if you remember from uh, from splunk dashboards over there we have the form tag or the dashboard tag right so similarly for the setup pages the main tag will be the setup tag and under the setup tag there will be lot of block elements or block tags over there okay there can be a more than one block elements over there okay and those block elements basically defines the ui of that of that particular setup page okay now you you cannot have a block element under another block element okay so that we need to remember now if if i just if i just show you the setup page we will be building in 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 future videos okay it will be something like this one for our tmdb app now over there maybe let let me let me show you the the structure we have it okay it is see apps tmdb okay inside the tmdb default folder if i just open that save searches.com file i have i have three save searches over here language search video data search and popular movie search the, the, i just created some sample searches over here okay so now if you if you see this this setup page over here okay so some something like we we will be creating a checkbox called enable schedule for language search okay so if i if i just show you over here so currently this 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 is enable schedule is zero maybe we will be setting up the data correspondingly so that it will be it will be saved something like this okay we will be enabling schedule for the language search and we will be configuring the cron schedule separately for each and every searches over here if you see it okay so that means each and every searches we will be changing the cron schedule from the setup page as well okay and 
also you will be changing the earliest dispatch time for all these searches together okay so this is the this is the earliest earliest time i have mentioned it is one day right so we will be changing that one as well now now if if i just show you over there okay so we we, we talked about a block setup element and a block element right now if i just tell you with this this picture over here so whatever you are seeing in the ui that's that's the block element over here if you see the bold color stuff that's the each and every block that means i have total one two and three blocks over there right now the block element has lot of attributes called title endpoint entity and mode okay now the title means the title text of the block just like this one the title text of the block whatever whatever text you will be giving it will be coming coming as a block or it will be coming as a bold letter over there okay and now inside the block there are two type of element you can use called text and input okay now if you see it i also written down over here text and input but before before we jump into that that level let us talk about two different stuff actually three different stuff over here in point entity and mode okay now this the, this the concept of this one has to be has to be very clear otherwise we won't be able to go we won't be able to work on this setup page uh, at all okay now each and every block the, this endpoint can come to the block element block level or it can come at that input level as well okay what does endpoint means now generally each and every setup page right internally it associated with a file right suppose if if you see it over here through this setup page i am basically trying to change the save searches i have defined in my tmdb app right that means under under the hood we are basically talking about the save searches dot con file right so that means we will be changing to this file through the setup page so that means if you remember i when i introduced the splunk rest api i, I told like there are it for each and every aspect of splunk right each and every action you can do it through from the splunk ui you can also do it through the rest api as well that means there are rest apis to change the save searches dot con file there are rest apis to change the data inputs file as well inputs dot con file right so we will be because those rest apis are splunk defined right out of the box it came so in the end point if i if i just go back over here in the end point we basically specify those end points those rest api end points over there now it 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 can happen that you are updating you are creating your own custom file in your app right so in that case maybe we need to create a user defined endpoint as well okay custom endpoints we will see how to create those those stuff as well through this setup we will also try to see those those stuff as well okay now endpoint we understood that means endpoint is basically corresponding to a con file or some file we are we are basically planning to update now now if i just go back over here what does entity means entity means in that file what stanza you are basically updating okay so that there are there are three stanzas right because we have three different save searches in our system so which stanza which save search we are updating so that's basically defined by the entity we will see how to how to how to update this language based save search like okay? this this particular this particular search or any any of this search over here okay using the in in the entity attribute we will be mentioning the search name over there okay now mode this is important so to do to explain that i will i want to go back to this this particular picture over here okay so now if you see over here i have written mode equals to iter that means iterative mode equals to bulk over here right now what does this mean if you see it over here okay now it may not be relevant when you will see it from the ui it will be more relevant when we will see the actual code okay for the setup page but here if as as i told like the the entity name you can give the name of the save search right the name of the search which which stands out which search you want to basically update now in the entity name you can also give a star 
or some regular expression we that means it will match either all of the safe search or some of the safe search based on the regular expression how it how splunk is validating or formulating the regular expression right so when you give regular expression for the entity name okay so in that case you have a option to choose between this two stuff this two stuff mode equals to iterative and mode equals to blank bulk over here when mode equals to iterative that means splunk will iteratively loop through all the stanzas of this particular file and display the stuff over here okay for each and every stanza if you see it for each and every stanza it displayed a separate text box which is basically looking for the cron schedule right now if you if you mention mode equals to bulk that means you are basically trying to give a same update for all the stanzas right so here mode equals iterative means you are basically planning to do separate separate update for separate separate stanzas but we will be writing the code maybe i'll, I'll just show you over here as well in, in next video anyhow we will be covering this one if you see it for for this one con cron schedule the entity i have given star but the text and the input field i have i have just written only once i have not written the three input fields over here okay that's the beauty of this using this regular expression in the entity entity attribute over here okay and here also i have given it it is star but the mode is bulk over here here also i have given a single input that means i i am planning to give minus two day for all the searches but for cron schedule i want to give the separate separate cron schedule over here okay so that's the difference between mode equals to iterative and mode equals to bulk over here okay so see if i just go back our go back to our mind map over here so we we talked about title endpoint entity and mode attributes right now we briefly talked about the there are two type of element we it supports under the block element called text element right which basically creates a, any any kind of text it can only be used inside a block element now provides the descriptive text for the setup page now if i just go back to the diagram over here if you see you can you can give some text over here under the block okay for each and every input you are mentioning so that you maybe you will you are basically giving the details or description of the those inputs over here okay so you can use that text element over there now if i just if i just go back now it associates the inputs with the with the specific field basically field means if i if i just talk about field it means the the config name over here okay so each and every input will be having a corresponding field name or config name to update okay so if i just go back over here so attributes see the similar attributes can appear in the in the input level okay if you see these are these are the these are the characteristics of the inputs it collects the input from the user that just like the the check boxes or the text boxes text box inputs right now it associates the input with the specific field as well like as i as i told because each and every input element will be having corresponding config name to update okay now that these attributes are same as these attributes coming up over here that means either we can mention this endpoint entity mode at the block level or at the input level over here okay the difference will be if you mention this stuff at the block level whatever the inputs coming inside that block will be in, will be inheriting that part otherwise if you may mention at the input level it will be only applicable to that to that particular input only okay so now input can have two types of element called level element and the type element over here okay. now the level element if i just go back to this picture we have okay for each and every input name if you see this one or enable schedule search for language so this is the mandatory part of the of an input called level so it basically have the name of that particular input over here over your popular movie search video data search or set the earliest dispatch time for all the searches these are all the levels okay and the type of the input basically states according according to the what type of input you want like whether it's a check box whether it's a text box or drop down something like that okay now 
to create a checkbox what you need to do we need to in the type element you have to mention the type of the input as boolean okay to create a text field it which has to be text create a password that means whenever user type something it will be masked as a star character and ui also displays a second password text just to match like just just the way we generally first time we create an account right we have to give the same password again right so those those stuff automatically works if you create a element input element called password we will see that one as well a list is just like displays values from the comma separated list okay so so type is again a required element type and level both are required element of the input input element now level element is basically the description of the input field which is displayed on the setup page and the type is specify the ui control of capturing the input like what kind of input it is okay so hopefully we we get a fair idea about what are the what is a setup page in splunk okay and how it is structured so in next few videos we will try to see some good examples of the setup page and we will try to see some of the complex examples as well okay see you in next video